Amen. Amen. I'm trying to shake that song, guys. I'm trying to shake that song. The thing about it is, guys, if you if you really understand, I know, I know. If you really understand what that song is saying and what I read to you before, how many of you would like to go back and to say, you know, to have been a believer all your life rather than than to have messed up your life? How many of you would like to be able to go back and, and some of the mistakes, I know that the mistakes that we made to bring us to the place that we are in today, but how many of you would have been a uh, 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 love to have been in a place where some of the things that you may have snorted up your nose, the money that you spent doing that, or shot in your veins, or the money that you spent gambling or drinking, the money that you spent going out and doing, doing the club thing, how many of you would like to have that back? But that's what that verse was talking about. It's talking about him restoring to you everything that was destroyed and taken because of sin. Because of your old life. And he says, listen, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to take the former rain, the stuff that I, that I blessed you with before, that you mishandled, and I'm going to take the latter rain. See, when you, when you start thinking about this, you, you think about it in terms of, of crops. There's a, there's a rain that gets the ground ready to be plowed. Seeds planted in, and then there's a rain that comes to bring the harvest up. But he tells you he's going to do that in the first month. He's going to bring the former rain and the latter rain and put it so it's a restoration for you. Restoration of not only your finances, guys, but your life as a whole. But we don't understand that. And so when we're singing that song, I'm thinking, God, rain on me. I need the former and the latter rain. There's some things that I need you to restore. There's some things that, you know what, are still out of whack for my life before. There's some people that I led down roads that are still on those wrong roads that I led down. I look back at my nephew who wanted to be just like me. Wanted to be just like me, and he wound up being just like that me. Carcerated, messed up, struggling, not able to have good relationships because everybody was a threat. That I led him down that road because he wanted to be just like me. And here I am with my life moving forward, but here is God saying, I want to restore to you. The things, the years, didn't it say the years? The years. He wants to do it in the first month. And when we grab this guy, it shifts things. But we just, we, we just, mm, it just, we just, we, we, we just forget that God is constantly speaking to us. He's constantly maneuvering things in our lives. He's setting up from the songs that we sing to the things that we heard. All of these things to bring us into a place where he can do what he wants to do. Where he can be God in our lives. We have to allow him to do it. But that means we have to be like I was telling the people down in the new membership class. We have to be willing to yield. We can't just come in and think, well, these are songs, and I don't, I'm not digging this song. It's a new song, or it's a song I don't care for. Every single thing is there to set you up for a better future, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> for I know the plans that I think for you, towards you. Thoughts of peace. To give you hope. Isn't that what God says about us? I mean, we've got plaques of that. I don't know if we got one in here. But you have plaques of Jeremiah 29, 11 everywhere. That's what God is saying. He's saying, I'm orchestrating everything to give you a hope. And I'm saying, this song was set for you. God put it in that guy who wrote that song's heart. Rain. Not just water 
fallen down. But we can look at it. What is the word? Then he tells us to the husbands to wash our wives with the water of the word. So if we're taking and we're having struggles in our relationship, guys. The water of the word rain and wash me clean. Rain on me. Open the windows of heaven. When God opened the, the windows of heaven before, it flooded the earth, right? This time he's not trying to bring the, the destruction of it. He's trying to restore. He's trying to restore. I know, I know. Some of you looking at me like, Pastor, man, I'm not even with you. That's okay. Those of you that are with me, I hope you're getting this. The significance of this, guys, is that Pastor is going to, God, God has been just really wanting us to come to a new place. Not be so surface, so shallow. It comes a time when we have to grow. And that's a part of that. Amen. Okay. We are going to sing that song again, though. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We've been talking about, guys, about relationship. And I know y'all are like, Pastor, you are broken record relationship. Wow, we got to keep talking about relationship. There's more stuff in the Bible. Yeah, there is. There is. That ain't where God got me right now. I got to obey him. But a foundational thing is all relationship. Because the thing about it is, guys, once God has your heart, and you have a good relationship with him, there's nothing, there's nothing that he can't do for you and you won't do for him. Once that relationship thing is fixed. But we've been talking about relationship, and last week we talked about how it's inevitable that as you get to know someone, contemptibility comes. Um, familiarity comes. Um, you get to know them, you get to expect things, you stop saying oh, thank you, please. You know, um, you find that that happens in a relationship. You tell somebody to do something and your heart is saying thank you and please, but your mouth is only saying do it. And that happens with um, getting to know someone because you, you think, oh, they know my heart, they knew what I meant. You know what I mean? And we start to do that with God. And we talked about that last week. And we talked about how that happens. And I said that something that needs to transpire is that we don't need to lose our honor. And we talked about for one another. But I want us to talk about for God this time, okay? We talked about for one another. Now, there are some things that I'm going to say in here that might make you go, amen. And there's some things that's going to make you go, I knew it. <laughs> okay so just 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 be willing if you don't say either one we won't know who, who, who it is or, or whatever you know just keep just look straight and nobody ever know that you disagree or are upset okay I want to talk about honoring God and that a lot of times we get into this place of saying that we honor God but we have a different actions that follow let's go to Matthew 15. Matthew 15. I'm going to start in uh, know, let's just start in verse 1. Is that okay? Matthew 15, start in verse 1. It says this, Then came uh, to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. Oh my goodness, man. Woohoo! That already, man, that's, that's something we can preach right there, young folks. 
I thought we could preach right there, but we ain't going to do that. That ain't what we're talking about today. Okay? Let him die to death, man. That's hard, boy. Woo-hoo! Mm-hmm. Parents, we ought to be... Hey, let me, let me tell you something. I got to touch this just right quick. Y'all mind if I put on that roll? Just a second. Just a second. Just a second. Just a second. I'm being real honest with you guys, and I've told this story many times, and I won't, I won't, I'll just tell the gist of it. Guys, if we don't train our children and teach them, one day, guys, listen, listen, you're hurting them more than you're helping them. That's right. You want to be their buddy, be all nice and kind. You are destroying their life. The Bible says this, okay? It says here that does not let him die the death. If you go through Proverbs, man, that's where I stayed a lot with my children. And when I taught children's church, man, I stayed a lot there with parents. Proverbs that said, listen, listen, I'm going to give you the Kenneth version of it, okay? Can I give you that instead of quoting it because it's King James and some of us get lost. But basically it says this. A beating a day helps keep hell away. <laughs> just, just being real. That's the kid's version of it, okay? <laughs> I know kids like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Let's go. Let's go now. <laughs> but that's the truth. It says, it says, listen. It says, listen. Uh, if you beat your children with the rod, they will not die. But it will deliver their soul from hell. Because foolishness is bound in the heart of the child. And if you don't remove it, then they're going to be fools when they get older because that foolishness don't go away. It's still there. It's bound. See, they said bound. But the rod of correction drives it far from them. If you deliver it, yeah, yeah, spare the rod. You, it doesn't say, most of, this is the way I, I learned it growing up. Spare the rod, you spoil the child. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, spare the rod. You hate your son. You hate them. Okay, sir. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. My children and, and, and kids, I know that y'all y'all going, man, you know, when your parents tell you, this hurts me more than it hurts you. I didn't understand that until I had kids, man. And the first time I had to spank them, and I wasn't, you know, it wasn't something I was really mad about, but I heard God say, you got to discipline this. Oh my gosh, I hated it. I hated it. My boys in here. Are they down in the other place? Okay, they're down in the other place. I said, man, I, I think I almost cried, man. <laughs> they are not in here. I don't know that. <laughs> I almost cried. I mean, there's sometimes, there's sometimes when they were getting older that I had to discipline them. And man, it hurt me. Because I thought, can I tell you the truth? Right. <laughs> Some of the stuff I haven't thought was funny. Right. I just did. I did. I was like, and I get ready to laugh, and then God says, no, that's right. <laughs> and you got to discipline that, man. And it's hard. It's hard. Especially when you don't have, it's, it's, you have no ounce of frustration, no ounce of, of seeing it in a, you know, in a bad light. None. I know. I know. But he had to discipline them. And my boys are so much better. They still, my, my youngest one still, I remember one time, man, he was so, he was so, so um, strong-willed. We sat for five minutes, five to ten minutes, me just, me telling him to do something and him doing the opposite. Pop, pop, pop. Do this. Did the opposite. Pop, pop, pop. Five, I, y'all, that main thing is abusive, but to this day, he doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that's the truth. That's no longer, that's no longer the case with him. That thing broke. It broke. Okay, his bottom didn't break, you know, but that thing broke. <laughs> that's why, that's why, you ever wonder why you got a lot of fat back there? <laughs> that's why I said, you know, you're all right, you're all right. You will not die. <laughs> the Bible says, don't let your soul spare. Don't, 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 don't take it easy on them just because they're crying. And that's hard. I remember I learned that early, man. If I was going with my mama, if she wasn't at that, that, that yelling stage and she was spanking me, just start crying. <laughs> And she was done. That's, 
you just remember, don't do that again. I go back in the room, I'm like, and, um, okay, all right, okay, okay. My wife said I was gonna do this, I'm sorry. I don't know, I, I didn't even plan on this, but anyway. Where are we at, honor? <laughs> honor. <laughs> It's all over the camera, maybe you can see it on the internet. That was talking about looking folks. Okay. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Verse 5. We're talking about honor, guys. We're talking about honor. It says, But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor is not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. The first place that we run into problems is, the struggle is, is that we say we honor God, but yet we don't do what he says. So saying, say, so saying, God, I love you. I'll follow you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Does no good if your heart is far from him. And the way that is known unto everyone else, see, God sees your heart. You know, he, we already know that, right? First yeah. Samuel 16, 7, or is it Second Samuel 16? First Samuel 16, 7. God doesn't look at the thing man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. But the thing about it is, is that we see this, but God is looking at the heart of it. And the way we know, truthfully, the way we get a chance to get a glimpse at the heart is by your actions. So when your actions say different than your mouth, your actions are the guidepost. And we have to begin to honor God. And the way that we honor him is through obedience. Obedience is our honoring of God, not just our talk. My dad used to say it all the time. Boy, there's a whole bunch of folks out there that are talk to talk. But son, I want you to be one that will walk the walk. Walk out what you believe. And so we have to honor God that way with our actions. And he says that there's so many. And there's so many of the church. And you notice that he was talking to church folks, right? Scribes and Pharisees. That's what we're talking to because we're the, we're the world's most, I mean, we're the world's worst, rather. And saying one thing and doing another. Because we know Christianese. You know it. You know what you're supposed to say when you come to church. Yes, everything is fine. All is well, brother. God has got me in this place. He's bringing me out. He's lifting me up. I'm just in the valley getting ready to go to it. The mountain. <laughs> we do. I mean, we do our Christianese. And the truth of the matter is we know what to say for every situation. We've done church long enough. But God's looking at our hearts and he's telling us it's time to honor him. Obey. Um, John 14, 15 or 15, 14. Somebody look it up right quick for me. John 14, 15, or 15, 14. Tell me what it said. Quick, quick, quick. John, just whoever gets there first to whichever one. You are my friends if you do whatever. Okay, say, say it loud. Say it loud. What is this one? You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. It's 15, 14. 15, 14. You are, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. What does the next verse say? No longer do I call you servants. Okay, okay. Hold on to that one. I don't think that's it. That's 15, 14. Try 14, 15. Amen. That's it. If you love me, do what? So the, I can talk all day about how much I love God. Man, I love God. He means the world to me. There's 
nothing that I would do that God doesn't want me to do. I want to bring him glory. Talk it. That's good. We do need to say these things. But what goes along with our lip service should be the actions that follow. That's why we always hear the, the, the term, they ain't number hypocrites in church. And guys, guess what? Yeah, that's true. It's hypocrites in church. That's all of us because we all put on a face. That's all it is. Hypocrisy. But people see it so blatantly because you talk so much about how much you love God, but you're showing the opposite things. You leave out of here and you're doing the exact opposite. You're the first person to flip off somebody when they cut you off. I, I, not you, just the person next to you. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. But if we love him, we keep his commands. But that's our honoring of God is through our obedience. Obedience, amen? Amen. Let's see, let's see. I don't have many, but I just want to. Here, here is this. Go to Malachi. This is still talking about honor. And remember, God is who now to us because of Jesus Christ. He is not only God, but he is father. What did he, what did he say? In, in, in 15, 14, he said, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. Right? But also... We're, we're, we're sons, joint heirs with Christ. Amen. God is now our Father. Go to what I tell you, uh, Malachi, not Malachi, but Malachi. <laughs> Malachi 1, starting in verse 6. Malachi 1, starting in verse 6. <clears throat> okay. It says here. It says here, a son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. So we can put in both, right? A servant is master. If I, if then I be a father, where is mine honor? This is now. Let me let me give you some 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 context to all of this. This is right before God decides. I'm not saying nothing else for 400 years. I'm not talking anymore. This is the last thing that he says before he takes a span of 400 years and doesn't say anything else. Because he was talking to these priests. He was talking to the children. It's his priest in the temple. And he said, listen. He said he was talking to them and he was talking to the people. And he said, listen. Guys. Guys. This is not what I set up. This is a far cry from what I set up. And you've gone on and you've made it now to where you are now God and you get to dictate how things get done. But the way I set it up was different. And he says, listen, you've forgotten all about me and what I've asked you to do. He says now in, in verse 6, let me read all of that again. He says, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? Because says, where is my honor? He says, look, and if I be a master, where is my fear? And this is not talking about the scared, the reverential kind. Honor again. Say the Lord of hosts, O priests that despise my name. And ye say in, where have we despised your name? Because that's exactly what we're thinking now. We're like, despise my name. Well, he ain't talking about me because I don't despise his name. That's the first thing we do. Defensive. That ain't he ain't talking about me no more because I love God. Okay. Okay. That's what he's saying. He says, Oh, priest that despise my name, and ye say, Wherein have we despised the name? Ye have offered polluted bread upon mine altar. Ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? What kind of polluted bread, God? What do you mean by this? And he says this. In that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. What, what, what does familiarity bring? Contempt. It's contempt. It's just contempt. Yeah, pastor down there, he crazy. They ain't doing such and such. And you know, I, I, I'll give something because I, I, I'm supposed to. I'll do this because I'm supposed to. But man, you know what? Get them. 
And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not e evil? Offer it now to your governor. Offer it to one of your leaders out there, your boss. Offer him your leftover time. Offer him your leftovers. Well, you know I had to do such and such for so and so, and I got to get my vacation time in, and I got to go over here, and I got to do this. So, so that's why I'm late, Mr. Boss. That's why I didn't meet the deadline, Mr. Boss. That's why I didn't show up, Mr. Boss. Offer that to him. Oh. He says, offer it to your governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept that person, saith the Lord of hosts? I'm just going to stop there. What do we do? We give God all of our leftovers. If I got time, I'll, I'll, I, if I got time, or if I got some extra money, I'll make sure I get some candy for the kids, you know. If I got some extra time, you know what, I'll come and clean, I'll come and help. My, you know, things things work out right, I'll be there. Mm. In your service and obedience to the Lord, which you honor and love. I know this feels too close to home. I tell you, we're going to have something. Right? <laughs> but the thing about it is, that's what we do. And we say we honor and love God. And we give him our leftovers. And listen, I'm going to talk about something that we don't talk about much in this church. But I'm going to say it. Even your tithe, you don't even give that. You give. You know, I got I to do all this and here. I got to do this. I need some new shoes and I got to get this. And then I got something left over. Here's a couple of dollars. Well, it's just it's something. I gave something. They ought to be happy down there at the church. I gave them something. Hmm. I could have just kept it for myself. Well, you, you're not giving it to me. Who are you giving it to? Are you giving him your leftovers? The pollu You're polluting the altar? Well, I said, not being it. I ain't trying to make you give none. I'm not going to take up an offering after this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. But I'm talking about honor. He tells us in Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shalt that barns be filled with plenty. Right? Isn't that what he says? Mm -hmm. But what did he call it doing when you did it? Was it mandatory? I'm going to break your arm if you don't. I'm going to kick you in the behind if you don't. He said honor. But yet and still, how do we take it? Well, you know, I got it. I got to do this and this and this. And, you know, I got to set up for this over here and this over here. I got to save some for my kids over here and this and this. We need to go out to eat because we're going to take this person out to eat next week. So we need to get, oh, matter of fact, we have these people come over. So this <laughs> you know how I know all these things? Because I used to think the same thing. <laughs> I ain't telling you nothing that God has not dealt with my heart about. It's like this. I remember I was telling I was telling Brandon this, but uh, I had a video. I don't know if I ever showed it, but it was like this. If we start to look at it properly, there are plenty of people, guys. Guess what? There are plenty of people out there that don't have jobs, right? And you got one. There are plenty of people that's that's getting opportunities that because of the Lord. But there's some people who don't have any, and you got one. There are people out there who. Who are much higher, who have much better degrees and all this stuff that, that still can't find work. But you got one. Who do you think did that? You? Because you're special? <laughs> if that's the case, that's pride. Because it's the Lord. But I was telling, I was telling the story, I was saying, suppose there was a man, you were sitting down on the computer at your little Wi-Fi spot and they brought a dozen donuts, hot Krispy Kreme donuts. I don't know if y'all like Krispy Kreme. I do. When they're hot. 
When they hot, you know, when they bend up like this, they just kind of fall, you know, Okay, I'm sorry, let's not get on that, let's not get on that. <laughs> but what I mean is, hot Krispy Kreme donuts, they brought you a dozen. When you're sitting at the table, and they hand you the dozen, and you go, why? And they say, because I love you, I just wanted to do it as a blessing. They give you the Krispy Kreme donuts, and as they're walking away, they just say, can I have two? I just wanted one. I, you know, I thought about it. Can I just have one for me? And then my wife sitting right out in the car. I just want to get her one. Can I have two? And you got a dozen. You got 12. That you didn't pay for. You didn't earn. It was a gift. And you got 12. And then you asked for two. And the guy, you know, that I was telling the story about says, well, you know, I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> and I didn't want to have some for lunch tomorrow, you know, <laughs> and a little breakfast, a little coffee and breakfast tomorrow. And I do have a wife at home myself. So I don't think I have any to spare for you. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh because it's somebody else in his donuts. But how do we do God when we get our paychecks? I'm sorry, that's what I'm talking about right now. Those of you who've been coming, no, I don't. But I'm talking about this because we got to honor God in every aspect. Obedience. So we get our checks, and we already we done plotted it out. You know, I want a breakfast the next day, and I want some Starbucks. Got to have a Starbucks one, you know. And I got to pay my bill. I've been waiting on a new pair of shoes for a little bit. I got this jersey I had my eye on, you know. And we go through all the things that we got to do. And, I, and, and can I be honest with you? Nowadays, guys, every bit of it, almost, almost every bit of it is legitimate. I want to say almost every bit of it is legitimate. We do have bills to pay. But God says, listen, honor me with your substance. And when the first fruits of your increase... Then, guess what, guess what? Then I'll make sure, I'll make sure, I'll make sure, I'll make sure. Not me, but God will make sure. I'll make sure that your barns will be filled with plenty. Because this is my avenue into your life. This is about relationship. Now he says, look, if we have real relationship, you can trust me. I'm the one who gave it to you. I need access by which when the accuser of the brethren comes, there is no guile in me. See? That's why he makes you do something. Because if he just does it on his own, then the accuser of the brethren says, why didn't you do that for me? Mm. Well, why didn't you do it for so-and-so? You're not just. You're not righteous. You're not faithful. And God can say, when we do honor him, he can say, wait a minute, they gave me access into their life. They allowed our funds to commingle. So now all that I have is theirs, and all that they have is mine. Just because of honor. But all we see is the check we write in leaving. What if the farmer saw the seed that he planted in the ground as a leaving? He might not honor and plant it. Then what will we have? See, that's the issue. It's the issue is it's, it's honor. It's bigger than us just talking a bunch. Honor comes all the way to every aspect of our obedience. Every aspect. And again, I'm going to say again, I'm not taking up an offering. I'm not. I said this to the, to the new members. I said, you know what my heart is, guys? My heart is to teach you the word so that you may grow and God may cause you to be in a better place in him tomorrow than you were today. Isn't that what I said down there? Something to that effect. That's why I do what I do, man. Well, because God told me to and I got to obey. But you know, but he's caused my heart to be in a place where that's what I think about. 
your development. And so there's sometimes when we say some things that seem hard, that stretch us, that cause us to, to, to the rubber to meet the road. I have to make a choice, a decision. On am I really following God or do I just want to go through the motions? You can and you can go through the motions and most people won't even know. That's the truth. I don't get to see hearts. And I don't pay attention to the offering back then. So I don't know. I make sure that I don't get, I, that my mind doesn't get caught up on that kind of stuff. Why? See, that's the, that's the thing, guys. We're trying to get, we're trying to get somewhere. So God can use us. Nothing, nothing am I withholding from the Lord. Remember when I told you in the beginning? If God gets you in a good relationship with him, there's nothing that he won't do for you. But there's also nothing he won't do for him. That's why there has to be honor, even as you get to know the Lord. Oh, I almost said it in the world. It's key. And I know sometimes when I talk to you about certain things, I say it and it sounds so hard. It sounds so hard. But it's true, right? Prayerfully, prayerfully we are learning how to use truth to be like a scalpel rather than a rusty knife. Just jabbing at folks. Just to get them to do what you want them to do. You don't care if you hurt them or not. That's not my intent. My intent is to take the word by the spirit and cut away what doesn't belong. And seal it back so it's not even as if anything was missing. That's the intent. Matthew 21, 28 through 32 talks about two sons. And this is... The last verse that I think I'm going to read today. Matthew, what I say? 21, 28. Matthew. 21, 28. 32. It says this. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work day in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, Sir, uh, excuse me, I go, sir. And he went not. Which of them, of the two of them, did the, uh, did the will of the Father? The first one, amen? Mm -hmm. Now I'm saying to you today, Maybe you've been given the lip service. Yes, sir, I go. And haven't been gone. Or you said, I'm not doing it, period. This is a day where you can repent and do. It's never too late to repent and obey. It's never too late to repent and obey. And pastor's not just talking about, I know we talked about money last, but I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about period. Repent and obey. I remember one time, um, my sister came to me and told me about a friend of hers who was sick. And I started giving all the reasons, you know, why we couldn't go. He was in Mississippi. They only allow visitors at this time. It was late. We had work the next day, blah, blah, blah. I started giving all these things. I said, I don't think we can go. And God dealt with my heart and said, you've got to go. And I repented. We got in our car. It's probably 11 o'clock at night. We drove through the night. Got there when the, when the hospital first allowed people to come in. We sat with this guy. We shared the word with him. He was dying. Cancer. Could barely speak. 
dying. It's on his last leg. They had given him, they, they, they had given him maybe a week to live, and he really was bad. I mean, shriveled up, barely talk, barely lift his head, was messed up. We went, we shared the word with him. We prayed. Two days later, they released him from the hospital, told him nothing in his body. No sickness, no cancer, no nothing, totally whole. The thing about it is, it's obedience. Although I started off saying no, God needed that point of contact. This guy, this guy knew Christ, but he didn't understand some things about Christ. Bless you. This is what I'm trying to express. Even if we say no in the beginning, just repent and obey, and God will still meet you. He'll still meet you. That's the loving Father that He is. Amen. To say this and then, then I'll, I'll really be finished. Or I believe I will. <laughs> I read my Bible. First, I read my Bible. Excuse me. I read my Bible first because of obedience, thus building my relationship. Second, to change my thinking. This is why I read my Bible. This is the reason why I read my Bible. Second, to change my thinking, thus my beliefs. And lastly, to strengthen my spirit. Thus growing my faith. Relationship, belief change, growing my faith. When I'm obedient to read, that's an area where we struggle. But if we start looking at it as, you know what? It is to build my relationship, to change my beliefs, to strengthen my faith. I start seeing it that way. We can honor God in that area as well. That's an area where we all struggle. Take this and all of these things that you've heard today. Honor God with honor God with your whole life. Not just your Sunday life. Not just your around church friends life. Not just when I'm feeling high on the mountaintop life. Honor him even in the valley. Because we're going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We're all going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What does Pastor mean? Why we all got to do that? Why? Because in between mountains, there are always valleys. You're always going to have places where things don't go the way you think they should. And you're going to become disheartened if you let it. Or you can say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no more. Because of my relationship, I know thou art with me. You only know that because of relationship. There, there are some people in here, I know that no matter what happens to me, you got my back. You know what? Relationship. We learn that by relationship. I know I can count on you. That's, that's, that's the way relationship is. All right, stop, kid. Come, come, and let's sing rain again. Amen. I got, I got to stop. Got to stop. I got, man, I got a lot more to say. But the thing about it is, guys, is this time when we sing this song, let it now be, God, I honor you with more than my lips. But I honor you with my life. Amen. 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 Come on, we'll stand and sing this together.